as I've tried to open up and tried to, to at least catch what is true and what is not true, I want my dad to be open to that too. He's, he's a, I wouldn't say stubborn, but he's a firm man. But I wanted him to at least um, consider and have an open mind towards the things that I have an open mind towards such that I can go ahead and say with freedom the things that I would, would consider a possibility. Well, the only thing I can have a concern about it, uh, his exploring evolution, as I understand it, is that if Nathan spent his life work trying to explain creation, he would, he would come one step short, and that's the miraculous element that God introduced that no man can explain. So if his, if his, if his hope and his dream in life is to explain creation, he's going to die a disappointed man, because you can't explain the miraculous he was laying down the line where he would stop and I was just trying to tell him I'm not sure I would stop there I might go go over the hill go over the ridge a little bit further to explore and see what God has over there but back at Wheaton exploration beyond the limits imposed by parents and pastors can take students to some very disturbing places some of the most troubling questions come not just from science but from the Bible itself how do we make sense of, of sin coming into this world? If we evolved from apes, did just one day an ape woke up and decided that he had, God said, you're a human now, and so I'm going to give you a soul that is responsible to know right from wrong and who my son Jesus Christ will die for after you've populated the whole planet with your little humans. So that, there's that to deal with, and then there's also when you look at some of the family trees that are in the Bible, they all go back to Adam or refer to a descendant of Adam. So we seem to think that Adam was an actual person. And I don't know how to make sense of that. Emmy Hayashi is studying to be a veterinarian. She went to a Christian elementary school, but a secular high school. At Wheaton, she is struggling to reconcile their opposing lessons. In high school, they automatically discounted the Bible versus in my Southern Baptist Church, they automatically discounted evolution. So these two line, two paradigms are just completely separated. High school, it was, it was tough, and yet at the same time, I think it made my faith a lot stronger because I was constantly tested on my faith. People expected me to be a Christian. They didn't know what a Christian was. I usually take the defense of evolution only because I get annoyed when I hear a Christian say, well, it has to be six-day creation. There's no other way it can be done. The Bible says so. And then, of course, I just flip to the opposite side. And I play the devil's advocate, and that's not necessarily a good thing to do. But I, it's more fun. It's intellectually challenging to be able to think from a point of view that you might not necessarily agree with. If, if you look at the Bible, if you look at Scripture, arguments will... Paul's but for most Wheaton on. students, this is more than an intellectual challenge. Debates over creation and evolution go to the very heart of their ideas about who they are and why they exist. And no part of Darwin's theory is more troubling for conservative Christians than the claim that we have descended from non-human ancestors and not from Adam and Eve. Hmm, I don't know. I'm leaning towards the idea that at some certain point in hominid evolution, God gave his spirit to hominids making us human. Because I, I don't believe human, early hominids were human. I believe that we're categorically different and that we do have a soul and we do have a relationship to the creator of the universe. But I mean, I don't know where that happened. I don't know if there was one atom or if it was a group of people. I haven't decided that yet. Well, I was going to disagree with your atom being a group of people. Okay. Oh. <laughs> See, I, I haven't huh? said theologically, that Adam, How so? What do you mean? Well, yeah. I think theologically, Adam has to be an individual. Paul basically yeah, flips it flat out. Okay. Since sin came through one man, and he means Adam, so salvation, redemption comes through one man, Jesus Christ. And so personally, I'm all, I'm all about, I don't know. Do you think it was like one of a group? Or there was just Depends one? how you uh, interpret man. <laughs> 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 to take the paraphrase of the... At Wheaton today, students are free to argue the possibilities of a literal or an allegorical or a multiple Adam and Eve. But for their professors, open debate on this subject is impossible. Thanks to the controversy stirred up by one man's remarks almost 40 years ago. At that time, I'd hardly been on the campus of a Christian college before. I had an entirely a secular education, but I had been a Christian for a long time. So being on a Christian campus was kind of new to me, and I'm not sure I knew exactly how to behave and probably didn't behave very well. 
In 1961, at a Wheaton Symposium on Christianity and Human Origins, Walter Hearn told the crowd that the same chemical processes that bring each of us into existence today could have produced Adam and Eve. When the news got out, Wheaton found itself under attack. What had happened is that some reporter for a very conservative uh, Christian paper, which was called The Sword of the Lord, which uh, you can tell from the title of it that it wasn't exactly a, you know, a peacemaking outfit. This guy had been really upset by my remarks or by the style. It is time for all of us to be shocked, thundered the sword of the Lord. Wheaton has swallowed a wholesale dose of evolution by allowing such men as Walter Hearn to express their wild viewpoint on the campus of a Christian college. Untold numbers of Christian people are seriously concerned about Wheaton. Fundamentalists flooded the school with hundreds of protest letters, including one from the mother of a Wheaton student. Twice I have heard that the college is growing liberal, that they teach evolution at Wheaton. What grieves me most is that our daughter may lose her faith at Wheaton. Is this possible? If her faith should be shattered or even shaken, I'd rather see her dead. To reassure concerned alumni and parents, Wheaton ordered every member of the faculty to sign a statement of faith, affirming their belief in mankind's direct descent from two real people named Adam and Eve, who had been created by God. Today, every professor at Wheaton is still required to sign this statement. The reason why, as I understand it, that Wheaton College main, continues to maintain the existence of a historical Adam and Eve in its statement of faith is simply because the existence of those two people occupies a key theological role in everything else that we believe. Evangelical Christians, and indeed all Orthodox Christians, believe that Jesus had to come and sacrifice himself on the cross and then conquer death by rising from the dead. Why did he have to do that? He had to do it because all of humanity was in bondage to universal sin, and then that leads to the question of where did that come from? Well, that in turn came from what Christians have historically believed was a historical fall by two human parents who uh, bore, in a sense, carried along with them, bore with them, uh, the rest of the human race and what happened. And so Adam and Eve, in fact, play a very strategic role in all of the theology of what, of what uh, Christians have historically believed. Forty years after Walter Hearn shook the campus with his shocking remarks, Wheaton is ready to try again. The branching tree of life constructed from the DNA... To help their students take a fresh look at the evidence, Wheaton professors asked Kansas State University geologist Keith Miller, a devout Christian and advocate for the teaching of evolution, to give the keynote address at a symposium on the fossil record and geologic history. So my response was to come to present myself as a strong advocate for the teaching of evolution and for the centrality of evolution as a unifying scientific theory and at the same time make very clear my evangelical Christian position. Many uh, evangelical Christians like myself, uh, and historically, again, since the time of Darwin, have seen no necessary conflict between the two. What does the fossil record tell us? Are there transitional forms preserved in the fossil record? And my answer is a resounding yes, lots of them. And, but first we have to know what is a, a transitional form? And I'll go back to Darwin's definition of a transitional form. This is... Uh, a Keith Miller's message to these Christian students is that all the evidence, from the ancient fossil record to the latest DNA analysis, compels us to accept the evolutionary theory in full. 